and I'm off again to have another adventure. Except this adventure was unexpected. I am going to see family and friends. Most of all, pay my respects to someone that has departed from my life who was very, very dear to me. So I'm going to attend a memorial service and to show you some of the great places in Milwaukee. And let me be the first person to say to you, welcome to Milwaukee. Now, I'm not sure if uh, Milwaukee Airport is the best airport, but it's definitely pretty quick getting through security. Yeah, that's one thing I can say. Hello, my name is Darrell Patrick. Let me take you on an adventure, an adventure that's going to span across the globe. It's a travel channel for people who love to wander, explore new cultures, cuisines, and see different parts of the world. And this, right here, is the beginning of our adventures. Join us as we explore the world together, sightseeing and indulging in this vast and seemingly infinite world. Welcome to Darrell Patrick's Worldly Eats Adventures. I'm at Mitchell International Airport, waiting on my ride, which should be here soon. The speed limit is 55 miles per hour. And my hour. driver apparently has a speeding problem. I failed to mention, that's me behind the wheel. My cameraman is taking picturesque shots for me. His motto, get the shot. Everything else in the world can wait. My dad car reminds me to slow down, but the rest of Milwaukee has places to be. 55 is definitely a courtesy speed limit. The view from a tall building offers really nice scenery. Most, if not all of those reside downtown where most of the nice views reside. I would love to take you guys to the Brewer Stadium, the Up Down, or Potawatomi. However, because of the nature of this visit, I will not condone in these activities. Instead, I will tell you more about me, if you're willing to listen. Hopefully this episode doesn't bore too many people. In this three-part episode, I will not only take you to places that have really good food, but places that have a deep, sentimental value to me. Let me take you to a place that for most of my youth was called the Boulevard. I spent the majority of my life on this block. It runs north and south on 28th Street. The funeral that I have returned for lives here. Yep. This, this is the area I grew up in. It, it looks a lot different actually. Uh, the two funerals I'm here for uh, actually gave on this block, we used to play in the three fields here. All kind of so, yeah, I spent a lot of time here. One of which is now blocked off. I stayed upstairs and the departed downstairs. Returning to what was once my stumping grounds and reliving all those memories that have not resurfaced for years leave me in a state of nostalgia. There comes a time in every person's life where they need to take a step back and revisit what made them the person that they are today. And wondering, how did they reach such a place? And where will this place that they have reached take them next and the course their life will take after? I am not sure where I'm headed. But I do know one place I am headed, and it's called the Domes to the Locals, or the Horticultural Conservatory. It was the only one of its kind when it was built in 1959. Don't forget to grab your map on the way in. There are three domes and we are headed for the first, which is the show dome. The show dome has a very serene feel about it. 
Speaking of serene, serenity is one of the five themes that the show dome transforms to. So, five times a year, you can look forward to seeing a different side of the show dome, cultural, historical, or fantasy. This 85 foot tall dome is the Botanic Garden of Milwaukee and is an iconic place you should not let slip away on your trip to Milwaukee. Now, let's head to the Desert Dome. This dome features plants from warmer areas such as Mexico, Africa, Southwest US, and a few other countries from around the world divided into new and old world habitats. This dome brings a bit of the world to visitors and residents. There's a very unique and large population of cactus here. Most not able to survive outside of this dome. This tree looks vaguely familiar. I think there was a song written about it. More like a whole album. Artfully displayed in a sanctuary that is admired by any who has the pleasure of visiting. The Desert Dome brings the desert to life right before your eyes. Yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty nice. I was hoping to see more, uh, more of the live animals in there, but I guess a lot of them are just kind of like hiding out, you know, because it's, it's still kind of early and then they do have some nocturnal animals, which, uh, we haven't really seen because we're here in the morning, but uh, hopefully we see some cool stuff in the air. This one is a little bit more hotter. It's hotter than the last one. Remember I said that one was warm, this one's hotter. But you can hear a lot more light if, if you stop in. Here, you can hear it pretty good here. And this, this one should be uh, more interesting because of the warmth here, the, the animals that live in that kind of tropical heat. Uh, it's, it's gonna be here. <laughs> Welcome to the Tropical Dome. It feels like an indoor rainforest. This place houses possibly 50% or more of plants that would be found in a tropical climate. You know, it, it doesn't grow here. It grows in the south. It's, it's the plant that's used to make chocolate and all that stuff. We love. The actual tree can be found here at the dome. So you don't have to go all the way to South Brazil or something like that, or somewhere where the climate is really hot to see this stuff. So I think I think that's pretty cool. I, I can only wait and imagine what else is going to be lying around that corner. Koi fish, which originates from Japan and they are right under this extravagant waterfall. Spices, resins, fruit trees, insects, frogs, mushrooms, and more can be found here. And I have only scratched the surface of what's hidden in this wonderland. A lot of the things that we use in our day-to-day -day lives originates from the rainforest. With so much to be had here, you just need to tread lightly and sometimes slowly and take in the sights, the sounds, and let your conscience be your guide as this tropical dome makes you feel like you are in a tropical paradise. Yeah, I had about enough of, the, of this area. And my cameraman, who was a lead in the kitchen, told me, if you can't stand the heat, get out of it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. The Mitchell Park Domes is a beautiful destination. One that I will not soon forget. is until you're actually like put face first you know in front of it you know it was there was a lot of animals in there you could hear them but it was hard to see them because a lot of them are
probably hiding in trees and things like that, but it was really nice in there. I mean, it was a lot of plants in there, sugar cane, uh, cacao leaves and plants. And, you know, it, it was, it was one of the good things, the great things about Milwaukee. So uh, if you are in the area, definitely come to the Domes, check it out. Um, it's, it's a one of a kind experience. What can I say? Yeah, I didn't think about it, but when I walked in, they actually have plants right here that you can take home that you're probably not gonna see in most of your people, your, your friends' houses or anybody around's house. Like, especially this one. I haven't seen this plant anywhere. I don't even know what the name of it is, but they got cacti and, you know, a lot of, a lot of different plants, so. And they also have a bunch more stuff you can get at the gift shop, so. Definitely take something to remember your trip to the domes. As I head out of the domes, I didn't realize what time it was, but it's lunchtime, and I'm headed to one of the most happening markets in Milwaukee. I am on my way to the Milwaukee Public Market, one of the most unique and diverse markets in all of South Milwaukee. And it's right here in the middle of the historic Third Ward District. All the ingredients are locally sourced and packed with a multitude of locally crafted seasonings to satisfy the curiosity of anyone looking for a new flavor. And the seafood is abundant. I want lobster. I didn't want it until I saw it. I believe the Great Lake Michigan plays a part in making sure this place is stocked with some of the freshest seafood, fruits, and veggies around. Yeah, let's see what else they got. Barbecue. I'm not sure how I let that one slip past this episode. Yeah, they got a lot of stuff here. A lot of cheese, probably. Uh, you know, but this is, this is Wisconsin. This is where we are. A cheese steak. The Milwaukee Public Market and the historic Third Ward District is a gathering place not only for food lovers, but a place for family, friends, and connoisseurs of all kinds. And I am sure some of my French counterparts will fall in love with this place as soon as they saw this scene. The walls are even aligned with cheese. As I look at all this cheese and wine, it reminds me of my dear friend Bertrand from France. Oh, how the French love their cheese and wine. It kind of grew on me, and every time I drink wine, I feel like I need some cheese to go along with it. You know, I was going to get a burger, but I couldn't find a really good burger place so I'm around here and get some seafood and see what that's like. I haven't eaten a lot of seafood in uh, this I'm all about this dude. Their burgers here, it sound pretty good. The, the condiments that they use on them, I'm gonna get that, uh, that bacon pepper jack burger and I'm gonna go out and tell you guys how it is. And I also uh, get some clams down at the end because um, you know I had clams in Thailand and I wanna kinda of compare them to how they made in the US from a, a person that specializes in making seafood. Yeah, so uh, stuck with all my cameraman he bought a beach for a king. Uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna eat any of that. Uh, I'm actually still waiting on my clams. As soon as it's buzz, I'll go get them. Uh, they're gonna make fried clams. Uh, the steamed ones they have, just like in the soup, you said they're kind of raw. But the fried ones, they're gonna fry and they should have some kind of sauce on them. But here's that burger I ordered earlier. And it looks pretty good. But there's a reason why I'm not the cameraman. And now, the birds are coming. I was not going to share my burger with them, but share and share alike. This burger, <laughs> it's got a, it looks like it got arugula, tomatoes, a pepper jack, onions, mushrooms. Uh, I don't know what possessed them to put all that stuff on a burger. 
but I, I can imagine it's pretty good. It's a well done burger. It was a steak I would have uh, I would have not cooked it so well done, but let's let's give it a shot. I'll let you guys know if it's really good. <laughs> That's probably one of the tastiest burgers in the market. So if you come to the public market, that burger place, really good spot. Definitely check it out. Nice flavor coming off that burger. I just went into the public market and uh, picked up the clam, so I figured let me pull these out, let you guys see these. And then I'm gonna go. Oh, they're fried. Okay, so they. So if, even if I'd have got them wet, they'd have been served with this on the side with a uh, sauce on the side. Uh, what is that? Uh, cocktail sauce. So um, I actually never tried clam but you know, fried. Uh, but I, I can imagine it's still pretty good. So let's, let's give it a shot real quick. Get out of the public's way. I'm pretty good without the sauce. Clam. They're missing that uh that umami flavor that you regularly get from eating the clam in the shell. But I mean overall a fried a fried uh clam is pretty good, but I prefer it with the shell on with the sauce, you know, kinda kinda like uh Chef Gig did in uh Thailand. That was pretty good. You know, the sauce on there was crazy good. So uh, I was hoping to find more of a place that was kind of like that when he said those steamed clams and how he makes it. It didn't sound like uh, it was going to be very appetizing in a soup. Now that lunch is over, I'm making my way to Demolay to talk with Mr. Gavin DeGrave and learn something new about my old community. Join me in the next episode of Darrell Patrick's Worldly Eats Adventures.